it's Robert from Team Elite. Today, I'm gonna be showing you an Ultra Guys deck profile. All right, so first you got like your starters, like you got me three Mola Seeks, one of the best cards in the deck right after uh, Ultra Guys Multi Faker. She's just literally a normal summon, attack directly for nothing and send a card. It's, it's I mean, it's pretty damn good. Then you got your other one, Marionetta, which is, I mean, a normal summon set protocol or the more born from your deck. It's just, it helps out a lot. You got your bouncer. She's pretty important. You sum that off of the multi faker and then just like, all right, you got a card on the field. All right, I'm just going to interrupt you and bounce that bitch back to your hand. Then you got your multi faker and your attack negate. This card's important. This getting hit to one actually kind of made the deck better. It's like, it was hit to one and it increased the like consistency even more somehow i guess it's, it gave us more space to do more things and try out different things and then we have your of course your attack negator which is basically your opponent wants attacking you say no and then you have it also targets a card in the field and can negate their effects which kind of hurts your opponent if they want to do things differently on to the spells you run very little spells in this deck i mean at least i do i don't run very many just two Two dualities, two extravagants. Uh, you can run three extravagants, and my personal preference, I just like two because I don't want an extravagance into an extravagance. It's just like potting into a pot. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Not as bad, but it's still bad because you're just sitting there with a card that you can't do anything with. Like mm -hmm. potting into extravagant uh, extravagance into a duality is amazing, mm -hmm. but extravagance into extravagance just sucks. Then we got our traps. Actually, we'll do hand traps. Uh, I run just two Ash and three Knee Brews. I don't really see, I'm the type of person I see Ash a lot. So I only do two Ashes in most of my decks because I just draw. I'm the type, I'm that one person you'll know that will draw three Ashes every single game. Yeah. And then I three Knee Brews because the, the card's just busted. It's just like, you, wanna, you just want to out combo and do all your plays. I'm just going to mid stop you and say no. Then you got your traps, which is literally the whole deck. Uh, two crackdowns. People started taking this out of the deck, but I really like crackdown mostly because it's like you're playing most decks. They'll go into, they'll do something like they'll go into a link that they need to start off their combos or go into a main combo card. And I could literally just go oh, crackdown, steal it. And it just stops everything. It completely can end their turns or just shut them down to where they end on a, a very mediocre board. Uh, two protocols, pretty basic. I mean, you're gonna run two. You you don't want to run one because if it gets banished or taken off the field, it's and you can't reoccur it somehow. Then it's just like, yeah, you're stuck. Two strikes. I mean, it's pretty explanatory. It's just strike. Three evenlies. These you can take out and side with different cards. I'm like myself. I'm playing a go second build. So sometimes I'm gonna play going second, but if I'm play, I know I'm gonna play a combo deck. Of course, I'm gonna go first and side them out. But I mean, three, it's, card's just amazing. Evenly is just too good. And three spoofings, uh, card's amazing. Just says, shuffle one Ultra Guys card back into your deck and then search any other Ultra Guys card. It's just like, that's, that's your other three copies of Multi Faker right here. And we'll do more. So we got three impermanents. Explain, sorry, the card's busted. It's just, it's literally, it could be turn one multi faker. Your opponent goes first and you see an impermanence with a multi faker. You're literally getting two interruptions on their turn for nothing. Three judgments, explain, it's judgment. I mean, there's nothing more to explain. It's just, the card says no, the text is just no. Yeah. And then your one uh, manifestation, Monster Reborn, it's just really good. It's literally just, you set it with the marionette, and then you just, I mean, you can activate it later on and then just be like, all right, Monster Reborn, your multi faker from the graveyard that you've linked off. Or some type of uh, Reborn, your link one, your monster, uh, your level one to attack and send. It's just, it can extend plays and disrupt boards to help you bring back your cards. Then we'll go on to the extra deck. So for our extra deck, you got your, of course, your. Three Link Karibos. I mean, there's nothing more self-explanatory. It's Link Karibo is a 
amazing card. Literally just link off your level one. You're getting a send, you link it off during main phase two, and you're getting a search. So it just, it's just amazing. Then you got your three Hexias. Great card, literally a negate. It just says tribute or archgrass card this points to, negate anything. And it's, it helps out a lot whenever you put your cards and you put your archgrass, like you can link off your multi faker or something else in the graveyard. Use your monster reborn to reborn your multi faker to pop its effect off again so that you get the uh, the special summon again. So you basically lost nothing off of linking. Uh, two Cerebius. I like Cerebius over Phoenix only because, uh, at least in my build, I run a, ba a lot of back row heavy hate already. So it's like, I don't really need two Phoenixes. I know most people run two Phoenixes, but my build, I run a lot of back row heavy hate. So the Phoenix is like, the two fe the two Phoenixes are necessary. So I, ha I just run one Phoenix, two Cerebiuses. Your one Kaleido, or uh, Kaladia, uh, she's just basic. She's good. You go into her, you could do some other, you could do some recycling plays and then go into Hexia afterwards. Then you got your basic package. Which will be Borload, Ball Sword. I mean, that's almost in every single deck. Some people are taking out Borload, but I still think it's good. It's literally just a free swing take. And then one of my favorite cards in the deck, Anima. Just came out. The card is amazing. You go level, you just almost summon your Molaseek. You attack, send a card, link it off for Anima, take something. Mm -hmm. You just rip two cards off their build for literally nothing. And, and you get a search off your Moleseek after you linked it off. So you plus, and then you took two cards off of their board. It just makes it disgusting. Then you got, for my side deck, uh, two Heavy Storms. As I said, I back row Heavy Hate. I don't really care for, I don't like back row. Uh, <laughs> crackdown. <laughs> my, Place a back row Heavy deck. I hate back row. <laughs> yeah, man, back row interrupt my back row. Uh, crack my third crackdown just in case. I mean, if I'm playing a deck that's gonna spam a lot, if I see two crackdowns, it's just that's an easy take two. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, Imperial Order. This deck's for mostly like Shadal Invocation, negate the magical meltdown, no invocations, no. Just shuts down everything. Yeah. Like they'll have to do, they'll have to go through extra steps to get rid of it if they can. And if they can't get rid of it, it kind of just shuts down their entire turn. Uh, two. Summon limits, this hurts combo heavy decks. Just, they go, you play in a combo deck of any sort, just go activate summon limit. All right, what are you gonna do now? You have two summons. We have two secret villages. Uh, you can take this to three. I just wanted room for other things. But I mean, I don't see much room. I run, I mean, you have summon limit, secret village. Then I have, all, I also have the, uh, the heavy dusters, like it's, I have so much like stuff that's gonna stop you and slow you down that I don't see needing to run it at three. I'm ever gonna side in one or two, so I just keep it at two for now. Uh, non fusion, uh, non fusionary. You don't ever see this. I put this in for Shadal and the the Shadal deck because they kind of window you and it kind of hurts. So I just do. I go first. I'll go first against them, and if I draw this, this just says you can't fusion. <laughs> Your, your whole turn is basically just you can't do anything with your invocation. You can't do anything with your Shadal fusions until you find a way to get rid of this. So so why do you prefer playing that over like Bee Barrier? Only because this is a continuous and it's the, it like that's gonna stay on the field. Like the D barrier is cool. Like I can activate the D barrier and shut them down. Yeah, it's just for that one turn while this continuously locks them down until they can get rid of it. Yeah, that's pretty broken. As and as I'm playing, like you're playing Ultra Guys, so you're gonna stop them from making things. So if they like they try to go into a Phoenix, you can just negate the Phoenix with something, or you can stop them from doing the Phoenix in the first place or something that back row. It's just it's easy to keep on filled and disrupts them completely. Then you have anti spell fragrance, the mm -hmm. same reason, and then the twin twisters for just popping like playing things against Simon Grates and all that. Popping that rage or the roar <laughs> or baiting it out just completely hurts them. And we don't matter about this card in the hand too much. Or like most of the time we don't really need it. Like they're extra traps or something in our hand if we have a hand. Then it's just mostly just discarding extra stuff we don't need. Yeah. And then of course you got your one little the beer token to put on your opponent's field for when you stop all their place. So now that we finished this profile, how do you feel about uh Altergeist just overall? Like 
in the meta in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. I think Ultra Geist is a hated deck because <laughs> it's it's a stall heavy deck that just stops most. Like it stops most people. Like it makes most decks where you have to like really dig around in order to get around them. And then when you do that, it makes them create things that they didn't want to. Yeah. And it kind of it kind of hurts, and most people just hate it because it's like a sit back, and I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy while you're gonna have to like try your ass off to get over. And it kind of <laughs> people don't really like it too much. But I think this deck will is almost as long as it doesn't get like I don't see it getting hit at all. But right, as long yeah. as it doesn't get hit anymore, it, like the consistency monsters then this deck i honestly can see fighting in any type almost any type of meta just because it's a stall heavy and it's just like it has so much like utility and they keep on putting out traps every like every set and then they're gonna make traps that are just basic and can go to any deck and ultra guys can take advantage of those which just makes them like a deck that's utility and it can last for a long time got it all right guys well that was rob from team elite appreciate you guys one two three come on